Hello and thank you for joining me for YVS number 9 where we are searching for flawless albums where you don't feel the need to skip any songs and the idea is is that when I find one of them albums then I consider them to be vinyl worthy. Okay today we have Alt-J and Alt-J are an English band and there's a good chance that you've heard them before. They're coming close to a billion listens on Spotify alone so they are hardly a secret at this point. I first discovered the band in mid-2015 through none other than the game Life is Strange. As much of a meme as that game is, I will always defend that the soundtrack for it is excellent. Alt-J's song Something Good is featured in the game and when I heard it, it was an instant favourite of mine. I never actually realised till just now that their debut album came out quite some time before I got around to discovering them too. I'm not sure if I was living under a rock or if it took time for them to get around to being heard. It would have been around late 2016, early 2017 that I would eventually listen to their debut in full. Okay, so let's talk about 2012's An Awesome Wave. And would you look at that? I love this album. We begin with intro, and what an intro it is. We have what sounds like a wobbly or out of tune piano, some echoey guitars with call and responses going from right to left and back and forth. It's great use of production, till the guitar lick down the middle comes in quite boisterously, almost like it's opening the floodgates for the song to open up as it does. The immediate use of multi-tracking with the pitch shifted vocals take you by surprise. Even when following closely, no lyrics are really intelligible to me, and I find that sets the scene for the rest of the album's songs, as I find for the most part the lyrics are more of a means to an end, and the end being very satisfying melodies, which I love. How they get there also is a lot of fun. It's unconventional to say the least, cryptic at times, and reminiscent of the mind's wanderings while tripping on psychedelics. For some, I see that this would make the album mature to listen to, and to others like myself, it's what I love about it. I understand how polarising lead vocalist Joe Newman can be too, but again, while this makes the band easy to parody, that in itself is quite the compliment, as it shows that they'd crafted a style of their own that everyone could identify as being theirs. You know, you can be plain good and likeable, but those who remembered often brought something different, something challenging, something spicy. And that's why I love this album so much. It's got the spice. The spice melange. And they keep bringing the spice. On the second track, The Ripen Ruin, it's a full a cappella. And for some, I imagine this would be a true what the fuck experience, as they probably may never have even come across a a cappella before. So with that in mind, I understand that this might be an easy one to hate, but for me, I personally love it. Is anyone else reminded of the Simpsons episode with the B-sharps of this as well? It's when like the B-sharps are in the studio and they're going through their white album phase and everything seems to be falling apart. Classic. Okay, Tessellate is a great track. Not quite a pillar for me, however, but I think in the context of the album it fits in really well as being the third track. There's something about the restraint in this track which keeps it from reaching any real peak, where it returns back to the percussion, it leaves you wanting more, and definitely in a good way. So what they give you next is their most successful song, Breeze Blocks. While I find that this track is my least favourite on the album, in the context of the track list, it does deliver on picking up on the tempo. Notice the 16th note picking on the bass that really drives the song forward, giving it that energy that Tessellate was prepping you for. The reason why this is in a category of its own is because this is the song that, if you're going to hear Alt-J on the radio, it's most likely going to be this one. And I just hate the idea of being involuntary played music that I didn't ask for. I just need to be in control when it comes to music. So with that in mind, that's the reason why this is losing me, is because I've heard it too many times when I didn't really want to. Following Breeze Blocks is a guitar instrumental, and oh how I love me a lush picked acoustic with natural atmos as an interlude. It's hardly original, but I never get bored of them. Alright, something good. While you may have noticed the fantastic compositions and tone used throughout up until this point, it's here where it really starts to sink in how great these guys are. I remember learning the guitar parts for this song, and the way it uses pull-offs while shifting the bass notes 
it's definitely one of the more satisfying songs to play for the fingers. And then when you add in the drumming, it really messes with my head. It's like a triplet with a dragged fourth and fifth. I'm not exactly sure if that's right, but whatever it is, I love it. And then the drumming stops for the piano, arpeggio, pre-chorus build-ups. It's such great writing, and it sounds so pretty too. The chorus is perfectly sweet, and it drops back into the verses so seamlessly. And the bridge build-up, it's all so, so good. It's, it's a perfect track. So from one perfect song to another, I have to say Dissolve Me is my favourite Alt-J song and one of my all-time favourite songs if we're going there. The rhythm of the melody never tires me. All the choices of tone complement the piece. Listen out for how the percussion varies in its punchiness to really add the oomph at carefully placed times. The xylophone sound of the synth was such a great choice as well. I love the tapping going on where it echoes and bounces around, and the harmony deserves an honourable mention too. With the lyrics, it's one of the less cryptic songs. It's clearly about an acid trip, and it encapsulates the childlike nature of what it can feel like too. So if you're going to trip, then this is one to listen to for sure. Matilda is a continuation of everything they've been doing up to this point. I especially love the filtered percussion in the middle of the song, and then the French lyric they get in there. Okay, with M's, consider that we're well into the middle of the album, and just take some time to reflect on how great this album has been so far. My only criticism would have been that I think I would have preferred this as track 8 instead of 9, as it feels texturally like a continuation of Dissolve Me. Fits pleasure, this one has so many great moments. From the acapella at the start to the bizarre lyrics, 1 minute 17, the guitar tone, 1 minute 43 seconds in, more of the echoey guitar tapping that I love, 2 minutes 31 seconds. Notice how they keep things different every time that they go over a section of the song. It's great songwriting and great production choices. Following Fitz Pleasure, the piano interlude is lovely, not much else to say, and that leads us to Blood Flood. Blood Flood could be my second favourite song of theirs. Everything about this is perfection. I especially love Joe's breathing in and out when he's delivering the lines. The guitar tone and how Gus is backup vocals fade in near the end. It's... Uh, I, I love this track. And finally we have Taro. So Taro is another bit of a fan favourite and for good reason I would say it's definitely earned that spot. As far as the vinyl goes the album ends here and I'm glad as Handmade adds nothing to me really. Tarot is on its own such a great closer. It's another debut that is vinyl worthy. I believe that's two in a row now that we've done where the debut has been vinyl worthy. I'll be keeping count of how many debuts are vinyl worthy in this series, by the way. Let's move on to the follow-up effort with This Is All Yours. And oh dear, what on earth happened here? <laughs> it all went to shit. With the intro on this album, it definitely hits similar feelings to what we heard on An Awesome Wave, especially from An Awesome Wave's intro and then Taro near the end. I guess I feel less into it because of what follows. Arrival in Nara for me is such a snoozer considering the intro that we just had, and then Nara doesn't do much for me either. Every other freckle makes me physically cringe at the line turn you inside out and lick you like a crisp packet. <laughs> like what are they thinking with a line like that? I, I just can't get past it. And yeah, that's, that's all that that song makes my mind think of is that horrible visualization. <laughs> Left Hand Free is fine, but I don't ever feel the need to stick it on as it tends to be the track you're most likely to hear involuntarily again from the radio from this album. Garden of Eden interlude could have gone either way depending on the state of the album if I'm honest, and so far it's not been going so well now has it? So yeah, in that context I can skip this. Choice Kingdom again isn't bad, but it's just not making me care for it. Hunger of the Pine, I do like this one, and of all things, it's the Miley Cyrus sample of her song 4x4 which stands out for me in the best way on this track. 
Warm Foothills is the highlight of the album. It's such a beautiful tune and it's always a pleasant surprise to hear Connor O'Burst show up. There'll be plenty more from Connor coming up in the series, don't you worry. The Gospel of John Hurt, again, this one is okay, it's just not doing anything for me in terms of making me want to stick it on at any time really, so it's, it kind of suggests it's a skipper to me. Pusher, again, not feeling it. Blood Flood Part 2, it makes me wish that I was listening to an awesome wave, and not in a good way. It makes me not want to be listening to this album. Leaving Nara, what a dull ending to a overall very dull album. And then you have a bonus track, which is a cover of Bill Withers with Lovely Day. I'm not really into the original, as I hear it all the time, but if I was to pick between this one and the original, it's obvious that I would pick the original as I don't like this cover. Next up was their release Relaxer, and it's a little better I guess. So here's the thing with Relaxer, they also released not long after it Reduxer, which has alternate versions of the songs from here, and I find it will be best to go through them together to explain my feelings towards them. 3WW, I think that's what it's called, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I know there's someone out there who's going to be like, oh no, no, it's 3WW, how could you say that? Well, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, this song is Alt-J's best impression of The Doors, and I dig it. I also like the Redux version with Lone Pal, I like his French verses, it keeps within the feel of the original version, and it's much shorter at 3.15 instead of 5 minutes long, and I feel that's the kind of the right amount of time needed for the remix, as it doesn't overstay its welcome. In Cold Blood, while the relaxer version is decent, I do prefer the reduxer version. I don't think I'd heard anything from Pusha T before this, but it definitely has me interested to hear more from him. House of the Rising Sun, the relaxer cover is fine, but the reduxer version transforms it into something worthy of the effort to cover. All versions of Hit Me Like That Snare I skip. The Relaxer version is probably my least favourite Alt-J song, and I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. Dead Crush I skip. Adeline, it's just not working for me. Last year, overall I do like this, but I wish that the first half of the track was either cut much shorter or disconnected entirely, as the last half of this track is by far the better half. And finally, Pleader. This is a keeper for me. It has a cinematic composition to it as it shifts very quickly between its sections. I highly recommend watching the music video for this one as you get a much better understanding of what I mean by that. The original source material is the highly acclaimed How Green Was My Valley by Richard Llewellyn. So that's twice now that the Welsh miners have been mentioned in the YBS series. I'm actually going to keep count of this, just out of curiosity. And now we're up to their latest release, The Dream. And okay, as you can see, this is a much more favourable scoring album. And I have to say, it wasn't always looking like this, and it's definitely grown on me after a few revisits. So with Bane, I really dig the atmosphere on this opener. In classic Alt-J style, it moves between being grandiose to comically baffling. The lyrics in this case, it seems to be a ballad in love of cola, of all things. I love the production on this track. It reminds me of Black Sabbath's Planet Caravan. Again, it's another time that I've mentioned this track. And I think it just goes to show how much I love that track and how influential it has been on people even if they may not know it. I'm sure they knew it. With You and Me, when I first heard the album and up to this point, my initial impression was, wow, what a really promising start. Hard Drive Gold. See, this took me a few listens for this to win me over, but eventually it did. This is a side of Alt-J that is very playful and it's surprising we had to wait so long to get a song like this from where it's just a short, fun, danceable bop. I'd like more of this, please. 
Much like Hard Drive Gold, I wasn't immediately sold on this track with Happier When You're Gone, but it's definitely grown from a yellow to a green aka Keeper for me. It captures bit of sweetness so very well, there's the delivery of the line the smell of burning cattle hangs up on the westerly sweeping up through the ferns, which sounds like a really depressed version of CCR's Down on the Corner. Does anyone else hear that? So yeah, this is, is a track which has really grown on me a lot. Next up we have The Actor, and we have 5 out of 5 greens so far. Wow. The production throughout has been flawless, and the songs have been decent to good. This one is taken right out of Gary Newman's school in terms of production, and it's very sing-alongable. Get better. Okay. Now I get the impression I may piss off some people here, but originally this one was a skipper. I struggle to connect with this one, but the more I've heard it, the warmer I do feel towards it. So... By that definition, it kind of earned itself as a potential grower, and maybe it will one day grow to be a green. I feel it's a little too long, but I do especially like the ending samples and the story of the song. Overall, sonically, it's taken me some time to grow to it. With Chicago, I like the first and last minute of this track, but the middle sections aren't winning me over just yet. In a similar way to Pleader, I can visualise the cinematic style that this track can go along with, and it's not so bad that it's an obvious skipper. It can grow on me. Philadelphia, this is another one that went from red to yellow. I especially like the string sections in this, so it is continually growing on me again. Walk a Mile. Starting out with some old school blues and eventually moving into a steady groove but still retaining the bluesy feel with the lead guitar. It's again a track that originally was red for me but has definitely earned a place as a potential grower to green one day. Does anyone hear the riff that sounds like the one from Dean Blunt's The Narcissist? Like, do yourself a favour and check out Dean Blunt's The Narcissist. That track is a hypnagogic masterpiece. Next up we have Delta, and it's very similar in style to Walk a Mile with the bluesiness of it. I appreciate this more as Walk a Mile grows on me. Losing my mind, I love the middle section of this track, but the beginning and end has a bit of growing needed for me to make it a full-on green keeper. Finally, there's Powders. Now, this is definitely one I'm looking forward to being over with, and that's the sign of being a skipper, if any. But here's a thought that it brings on for me. Say that this track wasn't on the album, would that then mean that this would be vinyl worthy? Currently in my head I would say no, that this is not a vinyl worthy album if Powders wasn't there, but it definitely has the potential to grow into being vinyl worthy I would say. As it stands, if we're rating it out of 5 then I would give this a 3.5 stars out of 5 overall on the album that is. And as it stands, I'm very unlikely to change my mind on powders, so I very highly doubt that this will ever be in my vinyl collection. Another observation about this album is that it's quite noticeable to me that the first half is way more favoured, in my case that is, and maybe one day the shift in the mood on the second half will win me over, that is the hope at least. There's some remixes on the deluxe version, Hard Drive Gold has two remixes and You and Me has one. For the former I am not really into them but for the latter with You and Me I actually am into it as it's a bit of a vibe. It's done by none other than Bauer who you may remember for his viral hit Harlem Shake which now feels both like a million years ago and also like yesterday somehow. Anyways, he does a great job of adding the bombasticity that made Harlem Shake iconic, and it has a good build-up without getting too self-indulgent, so good job, Bauer. And a nice little bonus easter egg for those who may not be aware, one of the remixes of Hard Drive Gold is done by none other than original band member Gwil Sainsbury, with his artistic name Lua, I think I said that right. And yes, some do attribute the success of An Awesome Wave down to Gwil, and it would be interesting to know just how much he brought to the album, as his signature tapping style 
which we heard throughout the album, it's not present, or at least not noticeably present, on the rest of the band's albums without him on guitar. So it does make you wonder. Alright, so that's my thoughts on Alt-J. Hope I didn't piss too many of you off this time, but if I did, make sure you let me know, and always remember, I don't care. But if you want to be civil about it, then do let me know what your thoughts are, where you agree or disagree, and yeah, just anything else that you think would be cool to add to this little monologue, and let's turn it into a dialogue. Yeah, we cool now? Peace and love, peace and love. Bye 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 bye.